Love God. Love people. Make disciples. I appreciate this simple yet profound approach to serving in God's mission that you, church, have adopted into your, let's call it a vision statement, right? That is what you are, what you feel like you are called to do. And it is a great reminder that without loving God, how can we love people? If we do not love people, how can we make disciples? Scripture calls us to go out and make disciples in all nations, as seen in Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20, which I believe is on the wall back there. This is also identified as the Great Commission. It is evident in God's word that Jesus is not working alone. He sends out his disciples to spread the word of God. When you hear the word disciple, what comes to your mind? Take some time to just reflect on that, disciple. The Hebrew word for disciple is talmid. It means student, or maybe more accurately, an apprentice. A simple student only learns what the teacher um, is providing them with. But an apprentice works with the teacher and sees what the teacher does and then imitates that. In the state of California, if you have a desire or a dream to be an electrician, it doesn't simply mean you go to school and you know pass your tests and um, do all your homework and get the certificate. It requires also an apprenticeship. You need to follow someone who's also already a licensed electrician in order for you to obtain that freedom. You need to learn and imitate from a, a licensed, and that's the key, a licensed electrician. Um, and also, I found that the Latin word for disciple is disciplus, which also means student or learner or more accurately an apprentice. And both of these languages help translate what the, Bible, the biblical authors, mind you, were initially trying to convey in the original text. The call to make disciples is not just a responsibility for a select few. It is a mandate for every believer according to God's word. We will be analyzing this morning Luke chapter 10 verses 1 through 20, so I invite you everybody to open up their Bibles to Luke chapter 10, and we will be diving into verses 1 through 20, where we see Jesus sending out the 72 disciples to proclaim the kingdom of God. This moment illustrates how Jesus entrusts his mission to all his followers, not just the apostles or leaders, but everyday disciples like you and me. Think about that, church. This passage serves as a powerful reminder of what it means to be sent, equipped, and empowered by Jesus' teaching to fulfill God's glorious mission. Just as the 72 were sent out into the harvest field, so too is the Inland Valley Church of Christ. As we reflect on this passage, we are reminded that the work of making disciples is vast and urgent but the encouragement comes from knowing that we do not go out alone. We go with the authority and presence of Christ himself. Let's get some context in Luke 10, because here we discover that Jesus sends out the 72 of his followers in pairs to towns that he plans to visit. And according to most commentaries and some research that I did, Sending the 72 was an extension of earlier events found in Luke chapter 9. 
Jesus sent out the 12 disciples, right? This illustrated his strategic approach to ministry, leadership development, and the inclusive nature of his mission, ultimately pre preparing his followers to carry out his work. This shows that his mission is for everyone, not just a small group. And this highlights the need for more apprentices to share the message of God's kingdom. Remember, an apprentice is not just a student, but someone who imitates what they've learned. The 12 perform miracles, like healing the sick, right? Jesus fed the 5,000, illustrating his power. Jesus taught about his identity and the cost for following his Father's word above, those, above earthly kings, right? He prepared his disciples for a future, challenging them that they will they will be introduced to opposition and disagreements. Now, pivoting back to Luke chapter 10, his instructions to them are clear. They are to go out and proclaim the kingdom of God, heal the sick, and offer peace to, to those they encounter. He warns them that they will face rejection, but it reassures them that their labor is not in vain because their names are written in heaven is found in Luke chapter 10, verse 20. This passage provides further encouragement for us as the body of Christ to acknowledge our calling as disciple makers. As I was reflecting on, on uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 1 through 20, some key theme, themes really stood out to me that I would like to share with you all. In the first slide, the theme of the urgency of the harvest stuck out to me. Here Jesus begins by emphasizing the abundance of the harvest, as we can see in the next slide, please. The world is filled with people, uh, next slide. The world is filled with people who need to hear the gospel and experience the love of Christ but there are few who are willing to go. And this is a challenge to his church. The harvest field is everywhere, right? It includes our communities, our schools, our workplaces, coffee shops, businesses. Luke chapter 10, verse 3 through 4. It reads, Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. Here we read that Jesus sends his disciples out with minimal provisions, reminding them that the mission requires dependence on God. He also warns them of the challenges they will face. I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. The reality of the spiritual disagreement is clear, but so is a call to trust in God's protection and his provision. And we will come back to this a little bit later. But this can be hard to hear because people who are not willing or who are not ready to hear about Jesus or accept Christ-centered behaviors, it can be difficult to be in those environments. And again, I too have experienced, I'm sure all of you have experienced this a lot during our attempts to share God's light in a broken world. But it would be wise for all of us to remember as believers to not be discouraged and stay faithful. Jesus also instructed the 72 to take no baggage, which can serve as a powerful reminder again that disciple making is not about relying on material resources or our own capabilities. The work of evangelism and discipleship making requires faith that God will provide for what we need and what others will need. Church, there is this urgency to this call. People are searching for hope, peace, and salvation, and we are the ones called to bring them the good news. We cannot afford to sit back and do nothing. We must answer the call. Can I get an amen? amen? We are all here working together as Christians to go out and make disciples. 
Oh, I believe the uh, second slide is labeled a compassionate heart of Jesus. So it might be, <laughs> it might be a slide back. We, yeah, thank you. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. This is in verse 1 through 2. So here, Jesus begins by acknowledging how crucial the need of making disciples is. He describes the world as a harvest, right, that is ready to be picked, but lacking the workers to pick them. This agricultural metaphor speaks to the urgency of the gospel message. And back then, you know, they were really familiar with farming life. And, and it's amazing how Jesus in, implements um, just familiar settings to help get the message across. Their souls are ripe for salvation, but too few are stepping out to share the good news. Something I also found interesting that Jesus does, is he, he doesn't just send the disciples without urging them to pray. He instructs them to ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers. I don't know about you, church, but whenever I hear we ask the Lord for anything, isn't that just us coming to him through prayer? Like, how do we speak to God, right? Through prayer. And then uh, the next slide. Yeah, so Philippians 4 verse 6 really came to me. Um, just encouraging us to pray to our Lord and Savior, to our Creator. Whenever we feel anxious or, you know, scared, just pray in community. It's such a great reminder. And this helps reveal that before we engage in the mission of making disciples, we must seek God in prayer. Prayer aligns our hearts with God's purposes and opens the door for more workers to be raised up. As we pray, we are also reminded of God's ownership of the harvest, right? This is His field, and He will direct the work. Practicing the spiritual discipline of prayer is something that my family um, does in everything that we do. And I encourage you all to do the same. There's a sense of peace being able to uh, just communicate with God whenever we want to. It's such a privilege. And the next slide has a very powerful image that kind of stuck out to me. Right? This is how most of the world will react when we go out to spread the love of Jesus, church. But please, please do not make this stop you. Jesus sent out his disciples with nothing but the clothes on their backs, emphasizing the need to depend entirely on God. This dependence extends to their safety, their provision, and the results of them spreading God's work. Going out to make disciples can feel overwhelming at times, especially in a world that may be hostile to the gospel. However, Jesus reminds us that he is the one that provides and he will protect his sheep. We are not to be distracted by worldly concerns or by the fear of disagreement. Instead, we are to rely solely on God's power as we go out and do his work. But what do I actually mean by worldly concerns? Some examples that came to my mind that maybe some of us or most of us are struggling with are like financial worries, um, comfort or convenience, right? Social status, or, you know, I have a packed schedule. I don't have time to go out. It's too hot. I would rather stay in my air-conditioned uh, uh, house or, or apartment. Um, you know, I don't have time to pray over this man lying on the sidewalk. I got to get to my desk. I got to get to wherever I'm going. I don't have enough money to buy this person a meal. These are excuses, church, that will prevent all of us to go out and make those disciples or apprentices of Jesus. In the next slide, it reads in Luke uh, chapter 10, verse 10 through 16. Let's read this passage. But when you enter a town, 
and are not welcomed. Go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Here Jesus does not sugarcoat the reality of rejection. He tells his disciples that there will be towns that refuse to welcome them, but they are not to be discouraged. In these moments, they are just to shake the dust off their feet, off their hands, and move on leaving the consequences of rejection in God's hands. We do not have the authority to force people to love Jesus. Right? We are not divine. We are not God. My father fell recently down a flight of stairs is a post that I read. I answered, I went into the comment section as I'm reading that post, and I was like, oh my goodness, I am so sorry. I, my family will be praying for you. And uh, these are some of the, the responses to my comment. I'm an adult. Magic isn't real. If you want to believe in those fairy tales, go right ahead. I don't respect harmful beliefs. Christians think they're better than us. This is just a paraphrasing. It was like, you know, it was a great conversation. But it reminded me that some people are, don't, maybe they just don't understand. And throughout that confusion will attack. Right? All I did was, I will be praying for your family. And these are the responses that I received. The work of disciple making will not always be easy. And there will be times when God's message will not be received. Right? However, our calling is to just stay faithful. And not just desire success in the world. To wor like, especially for worldly standards, right? Rejection doesn't mean failure. I'm going to repeat that. Rejection does not mean failure. But again, it is not our job to convince everyone. We simply are sharing the message and leave the results to God. Church, our job is to plant the seed. Plant that seed of Jesus and his teachings, and let God decide when he will cultivate that seed and find ways to utilize those certain people to serve in his mission. In Luke chapter 10, verse 5 through 6, it reads, When you enter a house, first say, Peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. As representatives of Christ, we are called to bring peace wherever we go. Philippians 4, verse 7 states, This peace is not merely the absence of conflict, but the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. By sharing the gospel with others, we give people that we encounter the opportunity to experience God's forgiveness through Jesus Christ. But again, not everyone will receive this peace. Jesus acknowledges that some will reject the message. But again, this should never discourage us. We are called to faithfully offer that peace of Christ, trusting that God is already at work in their hearts of those who are open to receiving it. Jesus teaches his disciples the importance of entering homes, right? And bringing peace if someone is willing to listen. He instructs them to stay in the homes of those who welcome them, sharing meals and building relationships. This method of disciple making is relational to its core. I appreciate that after service, you guys have that beautiful fellowship hall. Um, allowing that opportunity to share a meal together. Um, my wife is in Ireland, so I'm, I'm very uh, 
sad that she couldn't be joining us after after services. But pray, please pray for her as she's, uh, you know, navigating. Um, I think she's in Dublin, like yeah, but navigating in uh, in another country. But church, let's remember when we make disciples, it's not just about relaying a message, but it's about entering people's lives, right, with the peace of Christ. The kingdom of God spreads through relationships, hospitality, and genuine engagement with others. Luke 10, 10 verse 7, Jesus' instructions to stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you. This helps prove the value of forming long-term connections, not just rushing through encounters, but allowing that space for, for those relationships to grow. In the next slide, I have um, some questions to ask. Is Are you investing time in building those genuine relationships with people, especially those who do not know Christ? How can you be more intentional about creating spaces where people feel wel welcomed and loved so they are more open to hearing the gospel? The final theme it's all about rejoicing in God's work and not just the results. Luke 10, verse 17 through 20 reads, Do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Right? When the 72 returned, they were filled with joy and amazed that even the demons and other like, dark spirits were they submitted to them in the name of Jesus. They were so excited and pumped, and, and they said, Lord, even these spirits are subject to us in your name. Imagine if you, church, experience a situation where, I don't know, a dark spirit or you know, some type of possessed encounter or something ended with you commanding them to leave. And I, I don't know about you, but I would feel a sense of empowerment and be like, that's right, you better submit. I have Jesus on my side. I've got the power of Jesus Christ in me. But what was Jesus' response? He redirects their focus from visible results and he focuses it more toward a deeper truth, their security and identity in God's kingdom. Church, our success in making disciples is not measured by visual achievements or numbers. It is by our faithfulness to the mission and our relationship with God. Making disciples can be a very difficult task, and we might not always experience the results right away. However, Jesus encourages us all to find happiness in the knowledge that we belong to him. We are protected by his love and his grace. So ask yourself these questions. Are you more focused on the results or on faithfully following Christ's call to make disciples? How can you find joy in simply being faithful to his mission? Are you willing to trust God with the results even when people do not respond the way that you hope? This passage in Luke um, chapter 10 challenges and encourages us as believers to actively participate in the work of making disciples. Jesus' command to the 72 relates to his command to us today. Church, the harvest is plentiful. He is sending us out in our own communities. But remember, we are not sent alone. We go with his authority, his peace, and his power, his guidance. As the Inland Valley Church of Christ Church, this passage encourages you to be bold in stepping into the mission fields that God has placed before you, wherever those are, you know, in your schools, your workplaces, out getting coffee again in your neighborhoods. This mission is urgent. But our confidence comes from knowing that God is with us and that our identity is locked in 
through Jesus and his teachings. These verses illustrate um, the spreading the Christian faith involves sowing the seed of Jesus, right? Introducing others to faith and sharing the good news of salvation. The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The seed is the word of God. As new Christians mature, right, a cycle of discipleship is established, motivating them to spread the gospel to others. This is essential for establishing community, cultivating faith, and accomplishing the purpose of making disciples. I also, serving in this work of making disciples can be in your family, right? My family are not believers, and it's uh, and I try my hardest every time I go um, back to New York, especially my young nephews, right? I want to plant that seed of Jesus so that they know how awesome living a Christ-centered life is. My family is not dependent on, you know, taking them to church and because they are not believers, but I'm also working on them. And I know deep down, even though I don't see results at the time, I may be getting some snarky remarks from my sister, but I know d deep down I am planting that seed into my family. And when it is time, God will cultivate that seed. And, you know, especially for my nephews again, pray that maybe, maybe they will be standing up here one day preaching, preaching God's word. Church, let us rise to the call, ready to step into the fields around us and make disciples, trusting that God is at work in and through us. As we conclude, I have some challenges for you. The first one, pray for God to open your eyes to the harvest fields around you. Number two, ask God to give you the courage to step out and share the gospel with someone this week. Right? We know it can be scary, but remember, you are not alone. And if it is, if you find yourself, you know, really nervous, shoot a text to a member. Like, hey, I'm about to go into this very uncertain environment. Can you pray for me? Pray that God will guide me. Pray that he will protect me, even if it, you know, that, that interaction becomes hostile or maybe not the, not the result that I was thinking about. And finally, number three, how will you handle rejection or arguments when you share the gospel, right? Do you just give up or do you continue faithfully? I, uh, I really, really appreciate this, this image that I found. And um, the verse in John, specifically in chapter 6, verse uh, 37, which reads, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. This assurance shows that no one is turned away from Jesus. If you look closely, Jesus, this portrait um, that the artist believes that the envision what Jesus looks like is made out of tiny little uh, profile pictures of people. And that was a very powerful, powerful image because everyone is welcome to Jesus' table. All believers can participate in the mission of sharing Christ and nurturing others in their faith. No matter what your background is, right? No matter what you look like, no matter where you came from, we are all connected through our Creator as brothers and sisters to serve in His glorious mission. As a church, let us rise to the call 
ready to step into the fields around us and make those apprentices of Jesus, trusting that God is at work in and through us. Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for your kindness, for your grace. We thank you for your great, the great sacrifice that you made, that you sent your son for each and every one of us. We pray that you continue to open those opportunities for us to shine your light onto others. We pray that you continue to protect us in those difficult situations when, for those who are not ready, not ready to hear the good news. I pray over the inland, your church in the Inland Valley that you will continue to bless them, continue to motivate and guide, guide them to go out and serve and spread your word. We're just so thankful, Lord, for everything that you do, for everything that you have done, and everything that you will do. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.